We were hoping to have a Trump-free beat the press this week, but that's impossible. <laughs> Thanks to both President Obama and Trump's campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. First, President Obama scolded a gathering of prominent Washington journalists this week that the media hasn't been tough enough on a certain presidential candidate. Adam Riley has more. President Obama tackled the state of the media during a journalism awards ceremony, at times praising the press for doing our jobs right. And you should not underestimate the number of times that I've read something that you did. And I called somebody up and said, what's going on here? But frequently, the president sounded like a disappointed parent, like when he griped about journalists tweeting too much. The kind of journalism that we honor today matters more than ever. And by the way, lasts longer than some slapdash tweet that slips off our screens in the blink of an eye. And while he didn't mention Donald Trump by name, Obama strongly implied that Trump's rise was aided by the media. A job well done is about more than just handing someone a microphone. The speech was punctuated with applause, but it also sparked a backlash with some critics noting Obama's own affinity for softer interviews. He goes to uh, friendly media outlets and does avoid a lot of the tough scrutiny. Also prompting allegations of hypocrisy, the Obama administration's penchant for secrecy, and its zealous prosecution of whistleblowers. The Obama administration has used the Espionage Act to go after more leakers and whistleblowers than all previous presidential administrations combined. And remember, New York Times reporter James Risen was pressured by Obama's Justice Department for years to reveal a confidential source. He tweeted another journalist's question. But seriously, WTF is Obama doing at a journalism awards ceremony? We can probably assume that's the kind of tweet the president doesn't like. I would have to agree with him on that. I mean, these are kind of a little apples and oranges because, yeah, he has been fairly restrictive when it comes to the media. That doesn't make him wrong about about uh, Donald Trump. I was looking at the lineup for the Sunday morning talk shows. Donald Trump is on every single one of them, some of them in person, some of them on tape, some of them on the phone. And, and no other candidate has that kind of access. But it's not like the press, we've discussed that here before, hasn't been tough on him. They have. It's just that he is now, you know, a mega ratings booster, and that's how it works. No, the president's absolutely right about the in-kind donations totaling in the billions of dollars that ratings hungry media outlets have given to Donald Trump. Uh, and he's not the only one complaining about that as well he should. Problem is, he has zero standing. Uh, to be acting as a press critic, given the behavior of his administration, arguably the most press, First Amendment, unfriendly administration in our history. And that takes some doing. Uh, very bad judgment putting him in that position on the part of the people who invited him and the White House decision to have him talk about that. This should be a topic that he should leave to others because it's, <laughs> it's ludicrous. Well, I think it's going to be dittos on everybody's part because it, no, it's I slightly disagree. It, I thought it, it was too it's exactly as you say, John. I think that he made some good points, although all of this coverage of Trump has been overwhelmingly negative and it just hasn't had any effect. Uh, but more to the point, as you say, John, he lacks standing. His, his persecution of journalists over leaks from his own administration, uh, the worst record of any administration in history on complying with the Freedom of Information Act, um, this is not somebody who should be wagging his finger at us. He was also, as you said, substantively wrong about what the press has done and hasn't done. Yes, Donald Trump gets the red carpet and is on TV and discussed all the time. On the other hand, there is plenty of watch jogging. The problem is that the if you had a Venn diagram of Trump supporters and people who are swayed by New York Times op-eds, there would be no overlap. <laughs> yes. and, you know, and then even when Megyn Kelly goes after Trump really hard, which I think that she had, I mean, there are plenty of people even on Fox News who have gone after him very hard, hasn't had any effect on any Trump faithful. Well, I think that's because, and he wasn't wrong about this part, the, on the other hand, then he's on every show, and he's on on the telephone. Now, uh, Joe Scarborough said this week, hey, we keep inviting the other people, mm. give them the same thing. They won't come on the phone, or they won't give us, the, so what are we supposed to do? So there's that, but the fact is that the guy is a ratings booster. I mean, I agree with you. He, uh, the lack of press conferences and access and when the White House photographers, you know, sort of banded together and said, no, you are not going to have your guy give us the picture and say that's the one you use. That just is not, mm -hmm. that cannot be. So that's a fundamental lack of understanding or deciding that what you're going to do with journalists. 
Somebody invited him, however, and I'm not certain that that was chosen for him as a topic. No, I think I'm he, sure he, he, I think he sure. decided that's what he wanted to talk about. I mean, there, what about the tweet you know? culture, though? Because it's like yeah. that, that is so talk about inside Washington. I mean, journalists are tweeting at each other, not mm -hmm. not the general public. So, I mean, maybe the president catches a few of them, but it's not like that's all widespread. You know, but, I mean, but Twitter actually yeah. has been. People have been breaking news on Twitter. I mean, you know, journalists legitimately have used Twitter as a tool for breaking the news, and there's nothing wrong with that, for, with using all the media at your disposal. There's you nothing wrong with that, but I think the point Emily's making is that we really have discovered in the last year or so that our audience is not looking at Twitter. They're on Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? well, yeah. well, wherever the, uh, uh, the point is, d can some tweets, as they have, been wrong, <laughs> yeah, true. totally wrong, totally inaccurate, yeah. and then it starts a whole other thing. I think that's what he was trying to say. But just to come full yeah. circle here, yeah. it's really troubling that in the wake of a Republican administration that was not notably friendly to or hands off on uh, media restrictions, that a, a liberal Democratic administration has gone above yeah. and beyond that. It's a troubling trend.